and welcome to my channel. My name is Pazzi and I'm here today to start a brand spanking new playthrough of Dragon Age Origins. Uh, this is my first video on YouTube, my first let's play, my first everything. So uh, I'm so excited, but I'm also so nervous. Um, I want to make this playthrough super fun, um, not only to watch and hopefully to you know reminisce and maybe even learn some more about, um, but just enjoyable content. So um, since I am a newbie, I would appreciate it if you left me some comments about what I can improve, um, whether that's video, audio quality, um, if you want me to talk more about something something, talk less about something, you know, whatever it may be, content, um, I'm definitely receptive to feedback. Even though I'm shy, you don't have to be. So I appreciate that so much. Uh, secondly, before we dive in today, I will be playing with some mods. So I will put my um, mod list in the description um, with links to all of the amazing creators um, and where you can get all of your mods yourself. If you are playing along and you want um, these exact same mods, just make sure that they are activated here in the installed content along with any DLCs that you happen to have. I'm not currently planning on doing like a tutorial um, for mods or anything just because there are some great ones out there. There's um, a channel here called uh, Food Then Games. Her stuff is amazing and I use it a lot to fix stuff in my load order and you know just kind of problem solve and people will just give you their um, load order word for word um, online. But if that's something that you really want to see and want some help with um, because there are some absolutely outstanding mods out there that add beautiful texture and content and all this other stuff to the game then of course i'm happy to to do that as well but without further ado let's not talk about it let's be about it i'm ready to jump into the game and we're going to begin with a prologue here i'll let just let that play The Chantry teaches us that it is the hubris of men which brought the Darkspawn into our world. The mages had sought to usurp heaven, but instead they destroyed it. They were cast out, twisted and cursed by their own corruption. They returned as monsters, the first of the Darkspawn. They became a blight upon the lands, unstoppable and relentless. The Dwarven Kingdoms were the first to fall, and from the deep roads, the dark spawn drove at us again and again until finally we neared annihilation. came. Men and women from every race, warriors and mages, barbarians and kings, the Grey Wardens sacrificed everything to stem the tide of darkness and prevailed. It has been four centuries since that victory, and we have kept our vigil. We have watched and waited for the Darkspawn to return. But those who once called us heroes have forgotten. We are few now, 
and our warnings have been ignored for too long. It may even be too late, for I have seen with my own eyes what lies on the horizon. Maker, help us all. Okay, here we are. The background you select will determine which of the six distinct opening stories you play through. It also affects how characters respond to you throughout the game. Okay, so I remember a little bit about this game. I played through like one and a half times before. Um, so when I am making choices here in the very beginning, I'm going to definitely take into consideration varying up my um, playthrough just for entertainment's sake for myself. And also my current goal is to actually play through the entire series. Um, I've never played Dragon Age 2 don't hate me um, but after this playthrough with origins the hope is to play two and then to get at least two or three playthroughs of inquisition in because it's probably my favorite game of all time um in before the next game comes out fingers crossed maybe in 2024 um, i've learned to not get my hopes up so um in differentiating playstyle and characters and things like that i know i can get a little obsessive about making the puzzle fit perfectly but i'm uh, i have done a little pre-thinking about this so here's what i'm thinking here so first of all i almost always pick a female presenting character um, just because I think they're pretty and it's what I identify as. Uh, I will also say too the romances that I typically like to play uh, most of the time go for um, girls so it just kind of works out that way and because you know there's no like androgynous non-binary option we're gonna go with girl. Um, secondly, because I know that in Dragon Age 2 you have to play as a human, Hawk is only a human, um, and because in Inquisition I surely will make uh, at least one of my playthroughs an elven mage specifically, uh, that's like one of my favorite builds of all time. I'm actually going to skip over these two this first time, and I'm going to give the dwarf some love. Um, I feel like we have some amazing dwarf characters in the Dragon Age series, like Varric so charismatic and amazing um, but we you know really looking at a player character that is a dwarf I feel like is a good choice to start off the series and when it comes to class um, I since we can't be a mage um, we've got rogue and we've got warrior so um, I think again in my obsessiveness <laughs> I've uh, decided that in Dragon Age 2 I think I'd like to be a rogue um, just because it just kind of makes sense to what I the little I know about the story um, and I don't currently know of any drawbacks to why you wouldn't want to play a warrior I don't feel like the um, you know like the, the class is nerfed or anything so um, so long story short uh, we are going to be a female dwarven warrior on this playthrough when it comes to the background I am not fully decided on that um, we've got commoner um, which if you want me to read the little description for you <laughs> I can read, so why not? Uh, born castless in a land where rank is everything, bound as the lackey and thug of a local crime lord, you spent your life invisible until chance thrusts you into the spotlight where you can finally prove whether you'll be defined by your actions or your birth. I do like that, like, you know, started from the bottom, now we're here kind of mentality. Uh, I think that's pretty cool for an origin story. I don't typically go for the noble. Um, described as the favorite child of the dwarven king you proudly take up your first military command only to learn that the deadly intrigues of family and sycophants may pose a greater danger than uh, than even the battlefield remember the thing i said about being able to read uh so i mean i like that armor a lot i don't know much about like the dwarven noble storyline uh it's kind of eeny meeny miny mo for me okay um Okay, I think we're gonna go with commoner. My gut just tells me commoner. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yes, decision made. 
Um, all right, now we get into the fun stuff of the character creator. And here is where you're either going to love me or you're going to totally hate me because I'm definitely going to go through some of these options probably more than once just because I am a weirdo. So uh, I want to make sure we get the best starting character. You know, we're going to be with this person for a while. So I want to make sure they fit. Um, so already we're seeing, by the way, some of the, the mods that are linked in the description, we're seeing some of them here with the character creator, like um, at this preset here, and the eyes I'm pretty sure are pineapple trees vibrant eye colors, um, which seem to be built into these presets, um, which I like, I think. For dwarven eyes, I don't see any, like, lore-wise, any reason why... The eyes need to be um, any specific color or anything, though I guess we could kind of headcanon that, you know, living underground might make dwarf and eyesight, you know, super keen or something. So maybe there's something special going on there. Probably not cat eyes, but uh, I actually like these steely light gray ones. Let's go with that. Um, skin complexion. I'm gonna bring our slider back over here just so we can start from the very beginning. And this right now we just have kind of like aging. Um, one of the mods here is giving us some contouring and some, um, it's actually some makeup that's built into the facial structure, like some highlighter and things like that. Eyeshadow. Simple winged liner, that looks nice. Oh, more like that. Oh, all right. It's a choice. <laughs> Definitely, it is a look. I mean, the fresh face is nice too. I like that. I don't really want to go for anything that's going to cover up her. Um, her brand, her facial tattoo, just because, again, like, story-wise, if she is a commoner, that's going to be because of the BS cast system that we're operating with here. She's, you know, going to be pretty prominent. Ooh, that's pretty cool, though. That kind of reminds me of, um, shoot, what's his name? From Skyrim. Uh, Far Farkas, I think it is? <laughs> I, I just remember him liking his kind of grimy shadow thing, but again, I don't really want it to mess too much with the brand. Mm -hmm. I do have some pretty intriguing scarring. Ooh. I think I'm gonna go back to... Again, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta make sure, you know, we need to figure out all of our options. Uh, okay, skin tone. I'm not gonna go with any, you know, like avatar blue or like tiefling red or anything. It just doesn't make sense for us here. And again, like, you know, thinking through the mythology of it all that, you know, we could say dwarves living underground, they're probably not super melanated, so I guess we could go pale. Oh, no, no, let's see what our options are. Hmm, I do like that though. Intensity is all the way up. I'll probably leave all of the like intensity is pretty high 
harsh against like, the sideburn skin, whatever you'd call that, um, her upper jaw. Lip color. natural maybe a little pink corally maybe I'll bring the intensity down a tad okay eyeshadow I actually don't know that I'm gonna add any shadow I think it looks nice the way it is Alright, facial tattoo. Again, we know that's going to be an important part of the lore. In fact, um, if memory serves, if you choose not to have a facial tattoo, there actually, when you move through the character creator, will be a, um, a warning that pops up that says, like, you should probably have a tattoo or the story is going to be weird. <laughs> so, uh, so we definitely want to pick one here. And so we've got the classic one. Fear than I thought. Um, let's go classic, but we can change up the color. Make an outline. And if you look at, you know, older tattoos in real life, they're actually kind of blue, um, especially when they start to fade. So we could do something like that. But we don't really know what they're using for it ink, so it could be like blood red or something, I'm not sure. Just kind of, that lo actually does kind of look like a brand, like actually, like scarring. added a lot of hair in here. Actually, I think I'm going to change the color first just so we can see a bit of the dimensions. Um, so again, being obsessive about the history of it all, <laughs> I probably won't go with like a orange, pink, whatever, um, or blue, whatever that was we just passed. Um, probably going to stay, honestly, with the way that um, like Ogren has red hair, um, and I've seen a few other dwarves have kind of more of like a, yeah, like a reddish auburn color. Maybe we can stick with that, or maybe we'll think out of side of the box here. Who knows? There are a few characters that are going to have red hair, um, like Leliana, so maybe we want to be a little different skin tone would be good for like a brown also let's just stick with that for now while we mess around with the hairstyles okay so if she's a warrior I like the idea of her being practical and not having a you know big like bouffant hairstyle as <laughs> she's running into battle oops wrong sweater sorry about that um going on here though with her 
ear and her face tone not quite matching. I wonder if that is the hair. Maybe just cover it up. I definitely want something that will not uh, clip out of a helmet and be a little like reality breaking. Because, you know, we're all here playing Dragon Age for some reality. Uh, but still, and, you know, it'd be weird if we had this hairstyle that just didn't make sense in context. There are a few that are okay. Well, no, really no, it's not back there. A um, few that are okay, but nothing that's standing out to me too far. We're about a fourth of the way through the slider, so hopefully you're still hanging in with me. And a bow. I like that if it didn't like clip through her shoulder which longer hairs are gonna do that they just you know whenever you add a mod in that has and the game's not prepared for that kind of like dimensions romance scenes and things like that. <laughs> Definitely don't want to have a child. I used to love this hair uh, back before I, when I played the game before having mods. This is um, definitely a, a, an original hair and I used to think it was super cute and I used to use it all the time. But since we have the benefit of some new styles, we definitely got to try something new. That reminds me, well, except for the braid in the back, but actually, is that an original hair too? I don't know, it kind of reminds me of the Skyrim style. like an anime look little Mortal Kombat kind of stuff some of the Anto hairstyles which again like that's super pretty but I, I have a character already kind of developing in my mind and I just don't know that especially being a commoner I don't know that she would have this these gorgeous like voluminous hairstyles
banks to cover her face and then not too bad clipping through her face a little bit all teased and pearled and things like that it just doesn't feel right. <laughs> Love getting an entire mod package that adds a hundred hairs and <laughs> then skipping past the majority of them. You know, I mean, sometimes I just don't know when I set out to make a new character. Actually, don't hate that. It goes against that long hair thing I was talking about, but it's like a little disheveled. You know, a little bit more down to earth. Probably not. colors are not matching as much. We're getting to the end here. Okay, we'll totally eat that. Ah, it's still a little in her eyes. Might have to go back toward the beginning. Oh, that's actually kind of cute. It's a little, again, a little bigger than I probably would go for. part the braid it's you know still practical up and out of the way but still cute and yeah I think that fits is that literally the last hairstyle <laughs> yep okay you just I literally click through every single one you know again it, trust the process I suppose okay <laughs> here we are with the brown hair Actually, just to, you know, why not Let's look through and see if there are any other tones that we might want to use instead. It's like dark, dark, dark red. Okay, that's like dark red. Oh, I actually do like that. I just want to think a bit more dimension. That one's kind of purple. color. I probably want to go like one darker than where her hair is. So... Mm. Yeah, because that's where she is right now. Okay, yeah, let's go here. Okay. Alright. Fourth step down. Okay, eye shape. I do like that shape, but just to see what we see. Those are nice too. That one looks kind of tired. Okay, uh, I actually like that one. It's 
still a little lidded. It's good. Maybe go up one with the eye size. Maybe bring, oh, not out. Let's bring it in just by one. And I won't mess with much, with much else we, and we already picked the, the side color. Unless I do want to see maybe something like a hazel green. Now that I we picked the hair. It's more yellowy. It kind of reminds me of more what Morgan's eyes um, look like, at least in Inquisition. Okay, that's still kind of sticking with that gray look, but I kind of like those a little bit more, I think. Yeah, let's go with that. And I'm kind of second guessing the tattoo color now, though, because it's so close to her hair. Mm. Maybe something going back to kind of just the outline. really like her nose and um, that works too. I know that they, for the dwarven noses, they could just start, get kind of exaggerated. Um, so let's just stick with what we had. And I'm not going to do much with all of that. Um, again, this preset's pretty good already. I, I don't want to mess with it too much. You can't really change the mouth shape, but we can change lip size, so maybe I'll go up one. Mm. Yeah, work. And then... Mm. Like I said, I like that facial structure. Maybe let's... She does have a pretty pointy chin. think of like those angular features as being more elven, so I think that we're gonna go with that. Man, we're just blasting through all this. Okay. And her ears actually I think look good. That was one thing that bothers me about Inquisition and the character creator, the, especially the elven ears, that the, the hair just bisects the, you know, everything and it looks so unnatural. So I think those fit tucked under. Okay, for our portrait, we look fine. Maybe I'll change the background, though. Give her a little something special. This is something I'm pretty sure, I don't know about two, but I know that they take away from the games later in the series, so why not do it now? Warden, maybe it should be something kind of gray or blue. Actually, I kind of like the, you know, dark and light piece a little bit. And then we bring her down just a tad. Yeah. Okay, looks good to me. And 
last but not least, our voice. Oh, did I not change the eyebrows? Hold on a second. Can't leave the slider out. Or would that be... maybe eyes. Brow height then. Hmm. Maybe that's under hair. Yeah, I skipped right by that. How dare I. Okay, the no eyebrow alien look. We've got thicker, which I actually am kind of intrigued by that. That's kind of interesting. Um, we've got just a little fuller, more thin. Mm. I actually do think we'll stick with that. Microbladed kind of look. Sorry, now we're on to the list. I have lost the spell. I should do something else. Excuse me. How do you do? Right. Casting. Focus. Hmm. New weapon. Coming through. Off I go. Greetings. No, no, no. Greetings. Yeah, that's, that's not working for me. Charmed. I lost the spell. Not working. What makes this sultry? Move aside, please. Farewell. Oh, okay. That's what makes it sultry. <laughs> A little suggestive. Greetings. Oh, my spell! What does it take to kill these things? You're in my way. Goodbye. Hmm. I think I actually like that, or maybe cocky. We're gonna actually not click on this right now. This is a mod for later if we uh, choose to play Awakening. Um, but no spoilers on that right now. How do you do? Oops. Oh, where's my head? Greetings. How do you do? Damn. Lost the spell. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. And before clicking over completely, I think we've got our character ready to go. The only thing is the name. And you guessed it. I know we, you know, are just meeting <laughs> this playthrough, but I've done some research because that's who I am. Um, I like the name Nadia, um, but I'm always going to pick one that's more original. So um, I've got here on my phone, I'm looking at the fantasy name generator, which you can just Google. Um, it's a great resource for coming up with your own names um, for characters, especially because they're even broken down by story. So there is a Dragon Age specific sect uh, here with uh, Dwarven female names. Um, and it even it goes into some of the etymology and things like that. So and then we're going to look at this list and generate a few names. And we've got... Okay, there are some like kind of modern names like Olivia on the list. Uh, Rena, I like that. Lyra, L-E-R-A. I like that, Lyra Brosca. What does it mean, though? Google says, okay, it's like powerful, beautiful, all that good stuff. I kind of too like. It kind of sounds like lyrium, you know, like mining lyrium. Um, so let's actually let's go with Lyra, but let's spell it different. With Lyra, L Y R A. Cool. I think I like it. Mm, let's speak now. Ooh, I'm still, I guess, second guessing the hair. Oh, goodness. Maybe I do actually want one that's a little bit more brown. Black, though, I mean, Morgan's kind of got the black going for her. And we want to be a little special. Okay, yeah. Yep. 
that just felt right. Okay, yep, that felt right. I'm, I'm gonna move on. <laughs> okay, I'm actually uh, making a decision. I'm moving forward. I like that. I think it looks good. No second guessing here. <laughs> All right, so finally, whew, we've made it to attributes. Um, we've already got a good deal in strength and dexterity and constitution being a warrior. She's gonna definitely need some of those. Um, I'm not going to put any under magic because it just doesn't make sense, um, but we do want her to be cunning and maybe not that cunning and have some willpower. Typically I, you know, there, we should always have like a dummy stat and I guess that's magic for us here. Can we actually take some? No. Um, and typically I like to have one that's a little bit higher than the others. Does willpower factor into the warrior though? Willpower represents a character's determination and mental fortitude. High willpower majors can cut spells. Warriors and rogues, willpower grants more stamina. Maybe we actually, I think I might take away... No, no, I can't. Well, shoot. I don't know, we'll add more points to it later, so why not? For our skills, we've got coercion, like that, kind of a charisma check here. We've got stealing. I'm currently, I mean, I know, you know, we'll, we'll play the character as she needs to be played, but I'm currently not really thinking I'm gonna, especially because she's not playing a rogue, I'm not really thinking like sneaky, stealthy, um, thievery happening, trap making, survival, the character can detect, uh, yeah, so traps and, and not looking and things like that. Um, herbalism, poison making, I probably won't do. I just always, for some reason, forget, especially when it's like applying, this is true for Skyrim as well, like applying poison to your blade before you run into battle. I almost always forget to do stuff like that, so I just end up selling the poison anyways. Um, so, I mean, you can do improved combat. Bonus to stamina. That might be nice. Or add a tactic slot. I only have one point to spend here. Actually, I actually think I'm going to go with coercion. I think those, like, speech checks are important to me, so let's go with that. And I'm not sure if I want to do dual waiting or um, like weapon and shield or whatever yet, so let's just go see what we get. And we're going to start with powerful, so uh, training and hard work, a warrior has gained greater health, works for me, and um, less fatigue penalty. And then we have our first um, like action skill precise striking which you can use in combat um, yeah okay let's go sell some of those all right I think this is actually a good place to pause so thank you for sitting through the character creation hopefully you got to see some pretty cool mods at work and what the possibilities could be in the next video we'll pick right back up here um, and we'll jump into our player characters background a bit of storyline